Hello, everyone. Welcome and thanks for joining us today as we talk about using Java transformations in a Python Dataflow pipeline. Hi, I'm Sergey. I'm a solutions architect with Google Cloud. I help many of our largest customers to make the best use of their data in Google Cloud. And I'm Wei, a Google Cloud developer advocate. I've been fortunate enough to work with some of the largest technology companies in the world solving their data engineering needs. Today, we'll quickly review some of the concepts of Beam that will help you understand the premise of this discussion. That will lead us into a discussion about how multi-language pipelines work in Beam and Dataflow. From there, we'll show you how you can create your own multi-language pipelines. Let us first review some of the Beam model fundamentals to help answer why this is so important. The Beam SDK, or Software Development Kit, lets users write code in the language of their choice. The code, when completed, will describe a Beam pipeline. The code that the user just authored can then be submitted to a runner. There are many runners. Google Cloud Dataflow is one runner for Apache Beam. The runner will then take the pipeline code and execute it on the workers to run the pipeline. The runner will also ensure that the environment is suitable to execute the pipeline as needed. But what exactly are you writing in the code that gets submitted? The code describes the work that you want to do in the pipeline, but there are key additional building blocks in Beam. Transforms are one of those key building blocks. P transforms or parallel transforms are steps in a pipeline. Each of these steps can do one or more actions on the pipeline. This brings us to the next section. Why and how do we create a transform in a language different from the pipeline? Going back to the Beam model, one of the fundamental properties of Beam is to allow the developers to pick the language of their choice. That said, if you're choosing a language, why bother using a multi-language pipeline? One of the reasons would be to share transformations that have already been built. You can build these transformations in the language of your choice and leverage them in any other Beam pipeline. You may also want to leverage special libraries that may only exist in another language. There are a lot of libraries out there, but not every one of them is implemented in the language that you want to use. Today, we are going to specifically talk about calling a Java transform from a Python pipeline in that direction. The concepts here will be the same for other languages and other directions. For example, a Python transform called from a Java pipeline. This is what a cross-language transform looks like in a Python pipeline expressed in code. In this case, we are creating a Java transform, which will let the runner know that this is a cross-language transformation. We touched earlier on how Beam Pipeline works in general. Let's go a little deeper on each of those steps to explain what exactly is going on when a multi-language pipeline is run. While you don't have to know all of these details to make use of Java transforms in Python pipelines, it might help you to troubleshoot problems that you might encounter or help you optimize the pipeline launch processes. The first step in pipeline execution is the graph construction phase. This is where all these P transforms expand methods get involved and tell the pipeline which Beam's core transforms and potentially other, other custom P transforms need to be run. When Python expands a specific transform called external transform, it knows that it needs to get the details from, well, an external service. It connects to a process that runs a Java Beam SDK passes the transform configuration parameters and receives back the subgraph of the Java transform requested. We'll cover this process in more details later. Additionally, the Java SDK indicates which Java libraries will be needed by the pipeline at the pipeline execution phase. These libraries are Java jar files residing on the local machine or on remote code repos. Once the Python pipeline is finished generating the graph, it stages the pipeline graph and all the libraries needed by the pipeline in a staging area, which will be accessible by the Beam runner. Uh, 
In case of data flow, that staging area is a Google Cloud storage bucket. The rest of the flow is being run as specific. For the rest of the presentation, we'll be using data flow to discuss what happens next. Once the staging data, <coughs> I'm sorry, once the staging of the data pipeline is complete, the Python SDK calls a data flow API to launch the pipeline and indicates the graph and dependent libraries location. At this point, Dataflow starts the process of creating the worker virtual machines, which will run the pipeline's transforms. Each worker machine has the Dataflow runner harness, which will start all the language SDKs required by the pipelines. In our case, it will be Python and Java SDKs, which will be run. Before the Java SDK is started, the runner harness will download the Java libraries required by the pipeline to the worker VM and will add these libraries to the class pass of the SDK. Now the worker is ready to start processing the data element bundles. The runner harness knows which SDK implements each individual DFN. DFN is the smallest processing unit in Beam and routes the data to that SDK. Upon finishing the bundle processing, the output is serialized using Beam coders that are assigned to each P collection and sent back to the runner harness. All of this complex orchestration of cross-process communication is possible due to the Beam portability framework that standardized the way that all SDKs should behave. Now let's talk about what really happens inside of the extension service. Remember, this service is called by Python external transform during the graph construction phase. Each expansion service is a gRPC server that implements a single service method, conveniently called expand. This service is part of Beam's portability framework. Java SDK has the expansion service package, which implements gRPC service we mentioned on the previous page. When the main method of the expansion service is run, it does primarily two things. First, it scans all the jars that are on the class path of this process for classes annotated with other service annotation for a particular interface and creates a map of the registered external transforms. After that, it starts the gRPC server on a particular port and routes the expansion request to the right transforms. Transforms registered using this approach have a unique transform ID which are used as the keys to the map. The response back to the caller includes the details about the transforms, uh, which includes input and output P collections, side inputs, etc., and the list of libraries that will be needed by, <clears throat> by this particular transform. Let's go back into the Python world and see how the expansion service gets involved. There are three main, uh, there are three main ways to invoke Java transforms from Python. You can use external transform directly. This transform does all the heavy lifting of gRPC connectivity and processing of the data returned by the expansion gRPC server. The rest of the transforms here are built on top of the external transform and reduce the complexity of invoking Java or other language transforms. There is a number of pre-built transforms in Java that have corresponding wrapper transforms in Python uh, that from the developer's point of view, look just like regular Python transforms. And finally, there is Java external transform that allows Python developers to call Java transforms without the need to create the special registration files and classes we mentioned earlier. This can be used to invoke new custom built Java transforms or to use existing Java transforms which don't have the Python wrapper available. Let's discuss what's needed to create the Java transform that you would want to ac access from a pipeline built in another language. Before we create our own, we should talk through this mental checklist. This list isn't exhaustive by any means, but it's a great starting point. First, consider if the transform is already available, but using the pre-built transforms, you're accelerating your pipeline development. You will have all the benefits of having been built 
um, built in the Beam repository. Second, consider your pipeline and how you describe your data. Whenever possible, use primitive types between the languages. You will also need to use Beam standard coders so that the services know how to interpret deserialized P collection elements. And lastly, you would want to consider if you want to use the default Java expansion service lifecycle or, or running it manually. Why would you want to run the expansion service manually? Well, sometimes you might need to debug your expansion service. You can start it in a debug mode, set up breakpoints, and troubleshoot it by looking at the data that's been passed from the call in Python pipeline. For very complex pipelines that, in, that contain dozens of external transforms, each transform will require a start of a new Java SDK, and sometimes the need to download additional libraries from a central Maven repository. There are also cases where you would need to use a Java transform from a different version of Beam SDK that the main Python pipeline uses. By default, all pre-built expansion services use the Java transforms from the same version of SDK. If you need to use a different Java version to pick a new functionality or a bug fix and can't yet upgrade the Python version, then running the, Python, <coughs> the Java SDK with a different version manually is an option. What do we need to do to run it manually? Two things. First, run the expansion service main method with the port number as the parameter. And then add expansion service parameter to your Python transform. Back into the Java world. What kind of transforms can be used in multi-language pipelines? The answer, pretty much any BMP transform will work. When you write a new transform, it's customary, but not required, to have constructor methods and for the transform, which has multiple options, additional builder methods. Constructor method is a static method returning the p-transform object, and the builder method is an instance method returning p-transform. A very important consideration when designing your transforms, which will be used externally. Just use standard coders to guarantee interoperability with other languages. If you have an existing transform that doesn't use these coders, you might need to wrap it into another simple transform that changes the coder. Once you code at the Java transform you need to, uh, that you need to invoke, package it and its dependencies um, into the jar file. This jar will be added to the class path of the expansion service. You are now ready to use your transform. This is how the Python snippet looks like. You are creating a Java external transform, providing the fully qualified Java class name of the transform as the first parameter and specifying the class path. After that, you provide the constructor method and build the methods to customize your transform. When the Java expansion service is invoked using this approach, it uses a little bit different path uh, than what we describe for prepackaged transforms. It uses Java reflection to instantiate the transform and call all the builder methods before generating the transform graph to return. As you can see, there is nothing complex or special about the Java, the Java transform here. Just a couple of things to pay attention to parameters of the builder methods and coders of the inputs and outputs of the transform. We covered the coders earlier. What's important about the parameters is, is the fact that in order to use Java reflection with custom types, additional work is required. If you use primitive types, the expansion service code should be able to convert the data pass for the gRPC request without any additional code. Now that we have all the pieces coded and launched uh, and finally launched our pipeline, what does it look like in Dataflow? This is where the power of Dataflow really comes into play. From user's point of view, it's a completely seamless experience. Here you see a snapshot of a Python pipeline which uses two Java transforms, a pre-built standard Beam SQL transform and a custom Java transform. All the observability features such as nested transform details, input and output element counts and sizes, transform logs are available from a single UI and uh, can be queried programmatically using the same APIs. Now you can really mix and match the best of both worlds. 
ease of use of Python with Java performance. Speaking of Dataflow, you can learn more about Dataflow at the link above. You can also learn more about multi-language pipelines at the links below. We also want to bring your attention to the Hackfest, which is a free GCP-sponsored workshop. A customer will be able to see their own use case in a demo and a deep dive. If you're interested in taking advantage of this free Hackfest, please speak with your cloud sales representative. Thanks for listening. We look forward to hearing how you use cross-language transforms and how it helped you in your data journey.